All right, welcome. We are on task two on page 141. So make sure your book is open to that page because you are going to follow along as we do this together. So we have Erin. Erin is making a quilt for a craft fair. The quilt is made with four different fabric colors as shown in the picture. Complete the diagram, the tape diagram, to model the ratio of the number of blue squares to the number of white squares in the quilt. So for this first part, we are going to count the number of blue squares and count the number of white squares and then complete this tape diagram for part A. So in our quilt here, over on the side, this picture of our quilt, so let's see, we have a blue square here, blue square here, and a blue square here. So what I'm going to do is, because we have three blue, blue squares on the quilt, I'm going to shade in three of the squares on the diagram. Just like this. Okay, so three blue squares. And then we're going to count our white squares, which looks like we have one, two, three, four, and five. And on our tape diagram, we have exactly five boxes left here. And so we, our tape diagram is complete. So we can kind of visualize a comparison of numbers of blue squares to white squares on the diagram. All right, for part B, we are going to complete the statements to describe the ratio of blue squares to white squares in part A. So just like we did in the video notes that I showed you, that there are three ways to write a, um, a ratio, and we're gonna do it right now with the ratio of blue squares to white squares. So what comes first, it's always what it says. In the sentence, blue squares to white squares. So we're gonna start with blue and then do white second. So we have three blue squares. So we have three, two, five, because we have five white squares. We're just gonna do the same thing for the next one. Three blue squares and five white squares. And then for the fraction as well, this ratio is going to be three blue squares and five white squares, okay? And when we write this in a sentence, it's gonna sound like, right, for every blank, there are blank. So for every three blue squares, oh, ran out of room there. For every three blue squares, there are five white squares. Okay, okay. Now for part C, so is there, we're gonna write a part to whole or a whole to part comparison about the quilt using symbols and using ratio language such as for each, for every, or per. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to write a part to whole comparison using ratio language. You might hear my dog whining. She's stuck in the basement with me and she wants to be upstairs where Mr. Lundgren is cooking food. So she might whine a little bit for the next few minutes, but just bear with me. Okay, so we have for this part, we have part to whole. So we're gonna do, let's do blue squares, okay? Hey, chill. All right, I gotta let her out. All right, go. Okay, let's finish this problem. All right, so we part to whole. So let's do blue squares, okay? So we have three blue squares and we're gonna compare it part to whole. So three to the total number because we're doing part to whole, which would be right three plus five, which is eight. So three to eight. This can also look like three and eight like that, or three, eight, right? Okay, and then we are going to use, we're gonna put it in sentence form too, because we gotta use um, a sentence with for each, for every, or per. So let's do, um, let's do per. We're gonna use per this time because we haven't used it yet. So we're gonna say um, there are three blue squares per eight squares. So there are three blue squares per eight squares. There we go. Because that's the total number of squares that we are 
talking about, right? Okay. So the last question is, I cannot scroll all the way down to it, but that's okay. So for the last question, it says, for every small green square, there are two large green squares. Does this mean that one out of every two green squares is small? Why or why not? Okay, so let's look back up at the quilt. For every small green square, okay, there are two large green squares, which is true, right? We see here that we have one small green square, and then there's one, two large green squares. Okay, so that's true. So does this mean that one out of every two green squares is small? So let's think about that sentence. One out of every two green squares is small. We have three squares. So one out of every two. Well, if we just look at the two big ones, there's one and two big ones. Well, if the statement wouldn't make sense because we have one out of every two, well, there's two and one of them is not small right? The correct statement, okay, when we go down here, okay, for every, um, does this mean that one out of every two green squares is small? No, that is not what that means. So we're going to say no, because because one out of, because there are three squares and one of them is small. So the correct statement would be, right, one out of every three green squares is small. One out of every three green is small. That would be the correct statement. So, okay, that all looks um, super great. Make sure that you get all this down in your book and then move on to the next lesson.